All right, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. I am Mr. Davidson. I'm the principal of the Freshman Academy at Danbury High School. And we're here today to talk about what it's going to mean for you uh, to come to Danbury High School and what you need to do to be ready to come to Danbury High School next year, even though we're in kind of a crazy year. So I have a few guests with me today. Uh, Mrs. Ondek, one of my school counselors, is here. I also have Ms. Carlson, who is the director of counseling. And I'm muted. Sorry. And uh, your counselors are also here too. Ms. Harris, I believe our, our final school counselor is, is having some tech issues, but she'll, she'll get rolling in a minute. So I'm gonna try to project my screen and show you my presentation. Okay, it's kind of weird that you guys are the class of 2025. Each year I say that, but it's, it's, it's true every single year. Um, you guys just, just keep coming and, and we, I think we're, we're ready and we're gonna have a really good time next year. Um, and I'm, I'm really hopeful that things Things get back to normal a little uh, bit. Mr. Darren. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. I am Mr. Davidson. I'm the principal of the Freshman Academy at Danbury High School. And we're here today to talk about what it's going to mean for you uh, to come to Danbury High School and what you need to do to be ready to come to Danbury High School next year, even though we're in kind of a crazy year. So I have a few guests with me today. Uh, Mrs. Ondek, one of my school counselors, is here. I also have Ms. Carlson, who's the director of counseling. Sorry, I got a little tech issue. And I'm muted. All right. And uh, your counselors are also here too. Miss Harris, I believe our, our final school counselor is having some tech issues, but she'll, she'll get rolling in a minute. So I'm going to try to project my screen and show you my presentation. Okay. It's kind of weird that you guys are the class of 2025. Each year I say that, but it's 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 true every single year. Um, you guys, can you guys, can you guys just mute for a little bit? I'm hearing a whole lot of feedback. We're ready and we're going to have a really good time next year. Um, and I'm, I'm really hopeful that things things get back to normal. A little Hello, bit. Mr. Darren. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. I am Mr. Davis. All right. Sorry about that. Mr. Darren, you, you have a lot of feedback. I can hear you. Let's try again. Okay. So things we're going to talk about today, really, what are what is the Freshman Academy? What do you need to know for registration? What supports we have available for you? What extensions are there to support you? Dr. Roy is going to talk about the Danbury Early College opportunity if she makes it. And then what's kind of next for, for you as incoming freshmen? So throughout the presentation, if you have a question about a slide that I just talked about, we're going to try to answer them all at the end. So I have QR codes in the bottom corner of... Um, of each slide so you can scan that with your phone or you can um, if you're with somebody else and they want to type while, while you watch you can enter um, your questions and we'll answer them at the end so the freshman academy it's, it's kind of a special place at Danbury High School it's it's a little bit separate from everything else and the way we run our freshman academy is it's really a transition program to help you become ninth graders because there's a big difference between eighth grade and ninth grade and it's not fair that we just say hey welcome to Danbury High School have fun, go get them. So we have a transition program in place to help support you to make it to make it a, a little bit easier for you to transition to ninth grade. We have a teamed approach similar to what you may have seen in middle school. We have eight teams. Um, each of those eight teams has a has a different team of teachers that work exclusively with those students, and we also have counselors that that work with those teams as well. We have some supports that are only offered to freshmen. Uh, we have common planning time for our teachers, and like I said eight teams and we have college prep classes and we have honors classes that we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, my counselors are specifically trained to help you in the transition from eighth grade to ninth grade. So that's what our freshman academy is about. Let's learn a little more about it. We have a brand new building. It's only a couple of years old, um, 26 new classrooms, new science labs. We have a gym in the bottom, locker rooms. It's fully air conditioned, which is really, really nice at the beginning of the year and the end of the year. That's called our G building. And the majority of your classes, at least your freshman classes, will be in there. Maybe, maybe some of your electives will not be, but all of your core classes will be in the G building. So that's what it looks like. You can see a science lab, kind of a hallway. Um, I think this is Miss Ake. I don't know. That's Coach Box room right there. Um, just know that, that it looks a whole lot different now with social distancing and, and the way we have to do business now. But I'm hopeful that next year we can get back to a little more traditional education. 
things you need to know as a student at Danbury High School is um, you need to take a certain number of courses in order to graduate. So you have to have 25 credits before you can leave Danbury High. And that includes English classes, social studies classes, you need a fine art class, elective class, you need math, science. So your counselor will help you plan a schedule each year that puts you in position to meet those 25 credits. The thing that you need to know as a student is if you don't get those 25 credits, you can't graduate. So if you fail a, a PE class or a health class or your English class, you can't graduate until you pass those classes. We don't move you on to the next grade. We don't move you to the next class. You need to pass those classes in order to move on. At the end of the four year experience, you have to have 25 credits or more in those specific areas in order to move on. Uh, so what does that really mean for you? It means your freshman year, um, it's kind of prescribed. So your freshman year, you have to decide whether you want to take college prep or honors English. And whatever you choose in English, you have to choose the same thing in world studies. So your English class and your social studies class have to be the same level. You can choose college prep for both of those, or you could choose honors for both of those, but you cannot choose college prep English and honors world studies. So this blue box right here around the outside, they have to be the same level, okay? The same thing is, is true for math and science. So you can take college prep algebra one, but you also have to take college prep biology. If you decide you want honors algebra one, then you take honors biology as well. We also have honors algebra two for those students who took algebra one in middle school. So whatever you choose in English, you have to choose in social studies and whatever you choose in math, you have to choose in biology, but you don't have to choose honors across the board and you don't have to choose um, college prep across the board. So if you wanna do one thing in English, in social studies, you can do something different in math and science. Um, we also, for those students who need additional supports, we have reading and math labs that would be in your schedule, and those would take the place of some of your other elective classes or possibly one of your core classes. We recommend that all freshmen take health and physical education, and there are some elective courses that you can take too, because we have in our day, and you'll see a sample schedule in a little bit, we have seven classes or seven class periods throughout a two-day rotation. Right, so in our block schedule, you can take up to seven classes. Um, and you have to decide what you want, college prep or honors. And, and this is always a question, what's the difference? How do I know if I should take college prep or honors? Um, so what you need to know is in college prep, those courses are going to prepare you to go to college if you want to. So if you take those courses, you will be ready to go on to a, four, a two or a four year college when you're done. Doesn't mean you have to, but you'll be prepared to if you want to. Our honors courses, you're gonna learn the same things. You're gonna learn about the same um, things in those classes, but they're gonna ask you to go deeper. They're gonna ask you to do more, and they're gonna ask you to kind of take on a heavier workload. So you're gonna be responsible for, for more on your own that you're not gonna be doing in class. So the workload's increased. They ask you to go a little bit deeper and do a little bit more in that class as well. So electives, there's a whole bunch of them. Um, there's even more when, when we get out of freshman year, but in freshman year, some of them are, are not available to you yet because they require some, some prerequisites. So we have ROTC, we have art, business, family consumer science, music, um, science, theater, tech ed, and world languages. So a sample schedule for you as a, as a ninth grader Similar to what you, what you probably see now is we have an A day and a B day. So on an A day, you may have math, you may have health block two. Everybody has a flex period, and I'll talk about flex in a few minutes. Um, then you may take English, and there'll be lunch embedded in that block, and personal finance may be in block four. So notice that these blocks change from block A, um, from A day to B day. So block one, block two, block three. I'll try to let Miss Harris in and Dr. Roy. Um, but that fourth block, that one meets every single day. So that fourth block is shorter and it meets every single day of the week. So that's something to be, be prepared for when you, when you get to Denver High School. So when you go to register, we're going to ask you what courses you want to take because I don't want to put everyone in, in classes and then say, wow, Mr. Davidson, I didn't really want that class. This isn't fair. 
So we ask you to, to register through PowerSchool and request classes, and, and then we use those requests to build a schedule. So you're going to need the course of study guide, and that can be found right on our Danbury High School webpage. It's also linked in PowerSchool when you go to register. So you'll log into PowerSchool like you normally would, click on class registration, and that's when you're going to choose which classes you want to take. So you click on the little, little pencil over here and, and, and decide what you want to take. You want to take college prep, you want to take English, Algebra 1, Algebra 2, whatever it may be. Make sure when you're there, you're choosing semester one and semester two. We uh, live in a semesterized environment here at Danbury High School, which means you do the first half of the course semester one, and you do the second half of the course semester two. Um, if you're not successful in one of those semesters, you don't necessarily have to take the whole course over. You have to take just that semester over. I don't want anyone to think it's okay to not pass a class because it really puts you behind, but we do have some of that built in in case you need some additional supports. You do the same thing for electives, choose your classes. I'm sure you did something similar to this last year and probably the year before, so it should be pretty self-explanatory. So what do we do to offer support for kids? Uh, like I mentioned before, we have a Read 180 program and we have a Math 180 program for those students who, who need additional supports in math and reading. We have flex time, and I said I would circle back to this. Flex time is kind of like your team enrichment time, but it's a little more structured, I think. So what you'll do every Monday is you'll choose what you're going to do during that flex time for the rest of the week. So maybe you say, I have a test in math on Friday, so on Thursday I'm going to schedule myself to go see my math teacher for review. Or maybe I was sick last Friday and I need to make up a quiz in English. So on Tuesday I scheduled my English teacher so I can go and take that quiz. Maybe I just need to go to the library and study. So we have study sessions that are available if you wanted to during flex. We also have uh, enrichment. So if you're passing all your classes and things are going really well, we have additional activities that are set up that, that are kind of extra and fun and, and enrichment type activities. So you can take yoga. You can learn how to work in the auto shop. We, we offer those throughout, throughout the uh, school year. So if you're passing all your classes and you don't need any additional support during flex, you can take enrichment things. Um, we have a directed study hall. So if, if I find a real study hall, a normal study hall isn't working for you, we may put you in a directed study hall where you're up in the level four office with my counselors and myself. We have after school tutoring program. This, this year it's all virtual, so we'll see if that's gonna continue to maybe get you out of the building so you don't have to be in the building for tutoring after, after school next year. We have a twilight program, which allows you to take the classes you may not have passed first semester before moving on to sophomore year so that you can move on to sophomore year on time. We have a credit recovery program um, that's available typically to sophomores, juniors, and seniors if they, if they don't pass the class. It gives them an opportunity to make that class up. And we also have a pretty intensive SRBI intervention process to support students academically throughout their school years. Extensions. So what if everything's fine, I don't need any supports? Well, you can, I always say, you can get as far as you want in Danbury High School with the effort that you put in. So we have 26 advanced placement courses. Only one's available to freshmen, um, unfortunately. Um, that is AP Computer Science Principles. But once you get the basics out of the way, um, there are endless possibilities. In all of those classes, they, they equal college credit. So if, if you want to get a head start on college throughout your high school career, you can take these courses and get advanced placement credit in college if you score a three or better. Currently, 21% of our kids take AP classes, and 53% of our minority students take it. So that um, just shows that everyone's taking advantage of those AP courses. Um, flex, like I said, those extensions are in there. Dr. Roy, uh, who joined us a little bit ago, is going to talk about the early college opportunity in a few minutes. We have honor societies to allow you to kind of expand yourself and, and push your limits a little bit. Accelerated summer courses, if you want to take geometry over the summer, you can certainly do that so you can get a head start on the year following and possibly graduate early if you truly wanted to. CONCAP upper bound program, we have tons of sports, clubs. Um, I usually tell the freshmen when I talk to them in the middle schools, when you come to Denver High School, be more than just a student. Don't just come here to, to be involved in academics. Do something else. Give back to Danbury High School and the community in some other way. And there's so many opportunities for you at, at Danbury High School to do that. So Dr. Roy, I'm going to open this up so you can talk about your early college opportunity. Hi, everybody. Um, I am the director of our Early College Opportunity. That is a partnership with Noctuck Valley Community College where students enrolled in the program are working towards an associate degree in computer information systems while they're still high school students. And so you might say, well, how can I actually do that? 
Um, and the way that we're able to do that is we partner with Naugatuck Valley Community College, we partner with the Danbury Students and Business Connections and local businesses to help support you um, in acquiring the skills you would need to be able to um, function as somebody utilizing that uh, computer information science degree. So basically, um, in order to join, students have to apply for a lottery, which we will open up on March 1st. If you look on the Danbury High School website, um, getting closer towards March 1st, you'll see that that lottery actually opens up. And um, as long as you fill out the completed application, then you're put into the lottery and we're able to accept 60 students into the program. So how that affects you as a freshman is one of those electives that Mr. Davidson was talking about would become a class that we take called workplace learning. Um, and so the workplace learning course teaches you all the soft skills of business. That, that's how to make presentations. It's how to write professional uh, emails, letters, do professional presentations and working as team members and leaders. Um, we have experiences where you get to work with mentors from different industries and you get to um, get different work experiences. We do internships and field trips and those kinds of things to really kind of see what is it that local businesses in Danbury, in Danbury do and is it something that you might want to use in the future? Obviously, um, whatever pathway you choose, you're probably going to use a computer um, in, in your profession as you grow up. Um, the first experience that our students typically get to have um, is a summer experience. It's three days towards the end of August. Our students come into Danbury High School. We can do some team building. We get to follow our schedule, check out the building, uh, check out the people that work there who are there. Um, Mr. Davidson, we usually try to find him and have him sign off on things and do scavenger hunts and stuff like that. He's particularly tricky to find. Um, <laughs> but but we do get to uh, get to know each other a little bit during the summer first. Um, and then as you go through your high school career, I work very closely with you to kind of tailor that pathway, um, tailor your course selections and stuff to really meet the goals that you want um, before you graduate. So if you have any questions, you can check out our website and it's been updated. Um, so if you just search Danbury Early College Opportunity, it might not show up, but if you go to the Danbury High School website and click on um, the button there that says DECO, then you'll be able to find it. And if you have any questions, certainly uh, either call and leave me a message or shoot me an email. Thank you, Dr. Rudd. So what's next? You learned a little bit today. We're gonna to answer a couple of questions. I see them, them, them coming in on the forum. Um, so what's next? So the first step is, is seeing you all here today. Um, so today is, is West Side. We have Rogers Park and Broadview over the next couple of weeks. Uh, the next big thing for you guys is 3-1, we have our school fair. So what our school fair is all about is you can come in, in normal years, you can come to DHS and you can walk around, you can do a tour and you can find out about all the clubs, the uh, sports, the, the fun things like that. It's a little bit different this year, so we're gonna be doing it virtually, which I still think is gonna be pretty good. So I'll do a similar presentation like this to your parents that night so they can know what do I need to know as a parent of a student that's going to Danbury High School. You'll learn about the clubs, the organizations, the other fun things or um, interesting things that you can do to be involved in, in Danbury High School. Um, the registration opens later that night, so you can start choosing the classes that you want so that we can use to, to build your schedule. We'll talk to the private and parochial schools um, at night on the 15th, and I think I think uh, the registration window closes the 24th, but we can keep it open if we have any issues, but you guys should be really good at that by now. So I'm gonna leave this up while we start answering questions. Um, if you need to ask a specific one of us a question, you can either email us or call us and leave us a message and we'll get back to you because most of us are at home today, but we start up school again tomorrow. And so if you don't enter into the form question, feel free to reach out to us and, and we'll do our best to answer it. So Mrs. Ondek, I believe is taking a look at the, the questions. If anybody has any other questions, add them in now and we will do our best to answer them. 
Um, Mr. Davidson, can I just like pop in really quick? Sure can. Hi, Westside. So nice to see you, my STEM kids um, and Mrs. Reefberg's Global Studies kids. So I know Mr. Davison touched base on the registration for your freshman classes. We, uh, Ms. Reefberg and I, will also be open for, for those questions too. Um, for the, like, you know, choosing like, you know, your different types of math classes, honors classes, and your elective. So stay tuned from an, from an updated email from us and we can definitely uh, touch base with you. So we will be talking to all of our parents and students when that becomes available on Power School. Awesome. Thank you. Ms. Zondag, I have the questions here. I can just run through them on oh, okay. multi screens. So the first question we got was Are there uniforms for gym? No, we don't have any specific uniforms. I know in middle school you may have gotten uniforms. We do require that you change. We don't want you in jeans and a hoodie sweating all over the place in PE class. So we do ask that our students change for PE. So they need sneakers that don't mark up the floors and they need, you know, at least somewhat comfortable clothing to, to complete the activities in. That's a good question. Um, Mr. Miller asked where the best classes are and he put a plug in for himself, A208. Um, he teaches, Mr. Miller's the, the one who, who's in charge of, of uh, our YouTube channel. So he's live streaming this for you guys and then he's recording it. He does so much for us. So I will give him a plug. He does, does an awesome job. So if you're interested in, in um, engineering or you're interested in, in, in the CTE classes that he teaches, uh, graphic design, things like that. Um, he, he's a really good teacher. So that's his, that's his one, one plug he gets. Uh, during flex, if a lot of people choose one thing, does it close up? Yeah, it actually does. That's a really, really good question. So teachers set up these courses that, that students can join into during flex and they typically set their cap at like 17 for academic things. Um, so, um, so they can make them larger, obviously. So if, if, if we have like a tire change Tuesday, they make it a little bit larger so kids can go in and see how to do that sort of thing. But, um, the most of them are capped at 17. That's a really good question. Um, are there any programs or classes that, uh, we can take in order to get a free scholarship? Now, Denver High School is free, luckily. So, so you can come here. You don't have to pay anything. Um, but... What I recommend to you if you want to get scholarships for college is you work as hard as you can and you be as involved as you can in, in your school and, and colleges will notice that and they'll understand that you know, you're worth investing in and they'll, they'll give you um, any assistance that you may need to go there. Next question is uh, how do you apply for the honors program? You really don't have to apply for it. What you have to do is um, register for honors classes. So when you go to choose your schedule, choose the college prep or the honors classes you want and that kind of puts you in what I guess you, you think is the honors program, but those honors classes allow you to kind of extend yourself and, and, and challenge yourself throughout your, your career. Uh, we also have AP classes, and, and the way you do that is the same way you, you register through the, uh, the Power School portal. Um, next question, if we don't dress appropriately for gym, like worn jeans, uh, will it impact our grade? So if your teacher feels that you are not properly changed, then, then yeah, you'll, you'll lose points in participation and you won't get credit for that day. So you need to wear something that is conducive to, to, to PE class. Um, next we have, how do I register for my classes? So you go to your, your power school, click on um, register for classes and you choose which classes you want. You can't do it yet because it's not open. It opens um, on March 1st. So once that's open, choose your classes. I'm sure you can meet with your counselor if you have any questions to to kind of run through the options and they can give you some advice and they hear a lot of things. They've done this a lot of times so they know which courses may, may be perfect for you and which ones maybe you, you might not like as much. So they, they, they're pretty well versed in what we have. Okay. So those are all the questions I have. If I get some more in, I will uh, respond to the people who send them and I will post them online uh, near the video so that we can, we can answer them and you can get your answers. So thank you all for being here today. I really do appreciate it. Um, remember, 3-1 is our, our school fair. So look out for information on that. We'll send it to your schools and, and be there so that you can learn as much as you can about Danbury High and, and you can be ready for that smooth transition to ninth grade. Thank you. Mr. Davison, thank you so much for hosting West Side. It's always a pleasure to see you and your wonderful staff at the Freshman Academy. Um, our students really look forward to um, going up there. So thank you so much for this exciting presentation.